Alright, so let's go back and explore the rest of this massacre. A few more bodies to get some lore out of. Of course we have the lore chest, which we haven't quite opened yet. And uh, let's get out of here, because that sound is just terribly annoying. Ooh, more demons to play with. That was some poor Japanese anime schoolgirl's last words. Wow, these guys are going down really simply. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't gotten the hints, definitely do what I'm doing here. Just keep on attacking, and you'll win. Eventually. It seems to go in cycles of threes, pretty much. Now in here, this is where you really want to take note of what you're doing. It gives you two guys to get some health back. The third one, you're not going to be able to trigger until after you've triggered a cutscene. For some reason, he's already dead, too. I don't really know why. But uh, be careful in here, because this next spot is the reason why I carry around so much fury on me. You see these two guys? Well, that one guy may look like he's preoccupied, but he's going to get done with his little Seraphan friend in just a couple seconds here. And once he's done with that guy, it's free reign for him to join his little buddy here, and that makes two demons on you at once, and that is just unacceptable. So, a nice, quick berserker hands, tends to uh, even up the battlefield just a little bit. One berserker attack will not fully kill a demon, however. Oh god. Gotta get this done right, come on. Go away. Okay, cool. Knocked him back, and if we can get this guy down, sweet, perfect. Alright, this just got a hell of a lot easier. Just kind of sad how much damage these demons can freaking do. If you notice, I'm already at half health, and I've only really been hit once. Outside from a single swipe. And really, that's it. Oh, look at that. We're draining blood from... The air, apparently. That's... that's nice. Wonderful touch. Couldn't have fixed that with a camera, maybe? Anyway, thankfully, due to this demon slaughter, we have a lot of free blood just sitting around in all these Seraphan guards. Wow, it's almost like there's an om nom nom sound going in the background. Chomp chomp. The funny thing is, these guys kind of got the same look going on as the Seraphan Lord, although it's they're entirely not related. They're not related in most ways. But, uh, it's kind of strange from a design point to have two dudes who look like flaming skulls on green fire. Also, you'll notice that their wings aren't really even attached to their bodies. They kind of just float there in the air, which is, uh, pretty damn strange, too. Well... Looks like we got the short end of the stick. I would have rather had the Seraphan win. Now, I have seen the Seraphan actually win that fight. It's just kind of rare. We'll just recharge the sword here by stealing his. Might as well. And you know what? Screw that guy. We'll just go ahead and finish this up. So in here, the guardhouse is burnt. If you don't really know what you're doing, it's easy to assume this is the wrong way to go. But there are little platforms you can jump from. 
sides. It's not really like there's anywhere else to go. So doing what I just did right there is probably pretty dangerous. It may have been safer to just use jump, but whatever. Made it across. Also, I'm fairly certain this place would have burnt down by now, but, you know. Oh, where are you going? Ooh, got a runner. We got a runner! Get your ass back here. My goodness. You almost deserve to live. Oh, almost. What? Don't look at me like that. He threatened to call the guards. Whatever would I do? Alright, so another pretty simple puzzle here. Uh, basically, what we do is kill this demon first. Because F this demon. Also, this is the only section I've seen where demons actually can survive in the water. Uh, except it doesn't really matter. It's kind of obvious. Only vampires really can't survive in the water, but... Still, it's really annoying, because sometimes they can hop down there and you just can't get anywhere near them. Now this guy? Hey, buddy. I'll be coming back to you later. First, we got some wheels to turn. The basic concept of what we're doing here, I guess, is realigning the train tracks. And I, you can ki kind of have seen the train track move previously when I hit that wheel, but... I don't know, it's not really very apparent that you're actually having an effect on this. It's just kind of more pushing switches and wheels and whatever for the sake of doing it. On the plus side, nice blue chest. And thankfully that's right next to an objective, so that's, uh, that's always good. Now with those two switches dealt with, we can go ahead and grab Mr. Mans here and have him do our evil bidding. And by that, of course, I mean flip a switch. Alright, now that our train started, we can just hop right on, or not, and follow it and then suddenly magically be placed on the train thanks to the powers of cutscenes. Then we just sort of magically show up at this area, wherever the hell this is. Apparently the train took us to some sort of mining town or some such nonsense. But uh, whatever, everybody's dead here. Free, free lore left and right, and uh, I'd recommend if you don't know what you're doing here, well, you're going to see the solution anyways, so whatever, but if you really don't know what you're doing here, it's always best to leave a few of these guys sitting around, not take them all, just in case you have to waste some time, and that'll keep you alive at least. Anyway, the basic idea here is we need to grab a rock using this crane, then we will reposition it back to where it was. And if you haven't guessed, the left switch turns it left, right switch turns it right. Well, actually that's not true. The right switch turns it left. So, deal with that. Anyway, we're going to have to transport this rock all the way across, and eventually it will solve the puzzle. Uh, this is not a terrible puzzle, to be honest. It does involve a lot of green stuff, which means there's a lot of waiting around for, like, this door to open, for example. But yeah, it's not, not an awful puzzle. It's only awful if you mess it up. Alright, so from here we can go ahead and divert this track and go ahead and access the conveyor belt. Once the conveyor belt is turned on, it will move our rock friend through this area and we will use this switch to disable the little house here to the right. Hey, there's our rock friend. Our pet rock. Come on, Rocky boy. And we can switch this off. 
and to the right here, you can see that the giant crusher machine of doom has been turned off. And so our rock survives all the way to the other side. Now I suppose this is really to teach you about timing puzzles, which we're about to go on a magical fucking journey with in a few minutes, but uh, really it's just kind of annoying. Now you may have seen that power core I was just sort of demonstrating there. That's actually the end of this puzzle. The idea is, of course, that we take the rock using the giant magic crane thing of doom, and we smash the core with the rock.